Hi everyone, it's Jessica. How are you? Welcome back to my channel. Today we're working on another thing related to stockings. We're making a name tag for the large stocking that we made yesterday. Here's the one I just made. We're gonna walk through step by step of how I make this. Let's get started. So for this name tag that I'm doing, I have a couple pieces of scraps. These are like one and a half inch scraps. I'm just going to sew some together for the front. And then also on top of this, we're gonna put a little um, hand embroidered name piece. But really, these are so customizable. You can do anything you want. And this is just how I'm doing this first one. I don't know if I'll do all my name tags the same way. Probably not. I'll probably experiment and try different things. I'm gonna make this oversized and then we're going to trim it down later. So right now I'm just sewing the strips together. I'm kind of not sure how big I'm gonna go. So I'm going to do one more and then we'll stop there. This is going to be the front. The back will just be a solid piece of green. I have like green scrap here that I can just round about cut this from. So like something like this. We're gonna use batting in between but I have a little more detail I wanna do to this front part before we um, sew the layers together. You can do this freehand or any way you want, but what I did was I printed out my cat's name on a piece of paper and then I just cut it down to size. And I cut a small piece of white fabric. This is actually two layers of white that I just have glued with a glue stick so I don't see any of the thread behind it, but you could also use like an interfacing. I just didn't have anything readily available. And I'm going to trace the name onto here and then I'm gonna hand embroider the name with black thread. Here's how it looks after I traced it. I use this water soluble marker from Amazon. These are my favorite. I always use these when I'm drawing on fabric and I've never had an issue with them um, not coming off. So I am now just going to hand embroider on top of, of where I traced. And if for some reason I don't stay directly on top of it, which is very possible, uh, that this marker will just um, wash away with the spritz of some water. When I'm doing this, I'm using a back stitch, but there are so many pretty hand embroidery stitches. You could choose any kind. Uh, also, if you're comfortable doing free motion on your machine, you could free motion the name. Um, right now I have all my bobbins are filled and I really couldn't switch to black thread and I wanted to do this in black or I would have tried to do this on my machine. Now I've not done like names before, but I would have, I would have given it a good try. <laughs> to get this look to look the most accurate, I always find that you have to take really small stitches, smaller than I want to, like I would want to go this whole distance here, but if I did that, it wouldn't look as accurate as if I took that in two or three separate stitches. And um, to make it look straight, try to enter in the same place that you came out of on the previous stitch, and that helps your lines look straight and connected. I have three strands of embroidery floss right now that I'm using. I, try, I started with six because um, I did want it to be thick, but actually six was too thick. So uh, I took it out and started it over with three and this looks just right. I'm not pulling too tight when I, when I stitch down because if I pulled really tight, this would ripple and be wavy. I finished hand embroidering it. I took an eighth of an inch off of every edge because they were starting to fray a little bit and I spritzed it with water to remove the blue. Now I have this piece that we pieced before. It's not even, but that's fine. Um, we'll trim it later. So I'm basically just going to put this onto here on the lower half of it. I'm going to do an applique stitch around the outside. And now I have something that looks like this. Um, I think I'm going to add a decorative stitch just right inside the applique stitch all the way around. Something just to give it um, a little embellishment. 
if you wanted to do this exactly straight, you could use your ruler and just trace a little line around here. So my actually piece of white isn't perfectly straight, but if I come like a, an eighth of an inch off the edge, kind of just right on the inside of the blanket stitch, that'll, that'll work for me. So I'm just gonna do it like this. Okay, and then I'm going to just start, I'm just gonna do a running stitch. Let's make it kind of big. And I'm not, I'm not gonna be worried if they're not perfectly straight. Let me show you a little tip that I learned somewhere. So if I want my stitches to be the same length, what you can do is you can take your fingernail and just do a dot at the beginning and the end of your stitch. Can you see it? It's light blue there. And that way, when you're taking your stitches, if you hold your fingernail right next to it, it'll give you a guide for when to start and stop. So you just line it up and your stitches will be evenly spaced using the guide on your fingernail. finished sewing that all the way around and now I'm just going to spritz some water onto it to remove the blue marker it removes just like that magic and now I'm just going to let this dry and then we'll continue on so here is my piece so far it turned it's it's turning out so cute it's all dry and ready to use I also have a small piece of batting and um, I'm just going to put the front of the tag on top of the batting. The next thing I have is this piece. This is going to be the back of my tag. And um, I just hand drew this paper template. I'll put that as a PDF below if you wanna download it and use the same thing. Then what I'm going to do is just take the tag and put it on top. If you need to, um, Make sure you're placing it correctly. You could take the fabric off of the batting and just like hold this up to a window and just make sure that the fabric is placed correctly because we're gonna sew these layers together and we're gonna turn it inside out to be a tag. So if you wanna check your placement, you can do that. Now the other day I used my quarter inch foot when I was piecing a string block, even though I was kind of sewing over the top of something and it worked nicely. So I'm gonna try that again here. And what we're going to do is we're going to sew all the way around and we're gonna leave one opening to turn this. So I think I'm gonna leave one of the sides open. I'm gonna start really close to the bottom here. And let me just make sure. So I'm going with a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to sew this down. I'm gonna back stitch at the beginning here. And then when I'm about a quarter inch away from the bottom, I'm gonna pick up my foot and turn it. We'll sew across here. If you can't um, judge a quarter of an inch, like when to turn, you could always just sew right off the edge and then turn the piece. It is a little bit difficult to use the quarter inch foot with the batting. I think that's the difference compared to when I was just piecing it the other day. So probably next time I won't use a quarter inch foot. But basically I'm just sewing with a quarter of an inch all the way around. And when I come back to my first side, I'm gonna go down just a little bit, back stitch, and then stop and cut the thread. And this is what I have now. So my unit is sewn all the way around a quarter inch from the edge and I left this space for turning. Now I'm going to cut away the rest of the excess like patchwork portion and batting. You could cut um, at some of the corners if you're worried about bulk. Just don't cut through your stitches. So for these corners, I'm just gonna snip that off here, here, and here I'll just take a very little bit away. I don't think we're gonna need it here, but I'll do that just in case. And the same thing on this other side too. I'm not going anywhere near the stitches. I'm just taking a little bit of the excess away there. 
And then now we're going to turn this inside out. So we need to get in between the patchwork layer and the backing layer and just gently turn it right side out. I'm going to use my crochet hook here to kind of help me push the corners out the way they should be. And then just like we did when we were making the stocking, we need to close this hole up. You just take a couple seconds here and just arrange this so that it's nice and flat and you're turning it under about a quarter of an inch to match the rest. You could hand sew this closed or you can top stitch around the whole thing to close it and that's what I'm going to do. I'm just staying really close to the edge here, as close as I can kind of get without going off. And when I'm finished stitching around the outside, this is what it looks like. I think I'm going to embellish a little more. Now I could have done that before I stitched it together, but I was thinking about maybe using jingle bells or some little buttons. So I wanted to wait and do that until after it was quilted so I didn't have to, to work over that when I was sewing it together. But you can do it either way. So here's what I've come up with so far. I have this 1 8 of an inch double face satin ribbon in red. I tied a bow and I'm gonna cut these two sides but I just don't know how long yet so I'm leaving it long I'm thinking that'll go on the top part of this like that and then I'm going to put some kind of holly leaf at the bottom so I have a red button and I cut out one holly leaf and I'm going to cut out a second one I don't know if I want to use one or two but I want to show you how I cut these out whenever I'm cutting out felt I love to tape it on. I find this is like the most accurate way. Um, you can also use freezer paper. You can print the templates onto freezer paper and then press that to your felt and then use that to cut. That would work good too. I usually use packing tape, but these pieces were small. So I just use scotch tape here and I taped it to the felt. And then you need good sharp scissors uh, and usually small, the smaller the better. I'd probably even be better with a smaller pair here, but these are at least nice and sharp and I can get a really accurate holly leaf from this. So just cut, you cut on your lines. And then when you're finished, the tape is left on the remaining felt and you can just pick this piece up. And then you have a really accurate felt shape to use. So I have to play around with it. I don't know if I want to use two like that. I'm not sure if I want to turn them the other way. I'm going to contemplate a little bit. That's kind of cute before I stitch them down. So I've been working on the tag. Um, I've attached the little holly leaves and the button for the berry. And then I attached the bow. It's not my favorite. I kind of cut these too short, but it's sewn on and <laughs> it's good enough. I mean, this is Oliver's my cat. So I don't think he's going to mind if the bow's not perfect. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to install, um, a grommet right here. Now you don't need to do that by any means. You can just thread a needle. Right now I have some thread in here. This is how I'm going to attach it to the stocking, but you could just go right through here and then go through the stocking if you didn't have a grommet or didn't want to do that. They're really simple to install, but they do feel intimidating sometimes. The kit that I got isn't great, so I'm not going to recommend it. Um, but I do have these tools from another kit that I have. And this is for like snaps. So I borrowed these tools from that kit to help me install this grommet. And basically what you do is you figure out where you want it on your on anything you're doing. And then this is kind of like blunt enough to when I hammer it, it's gonna go through here and make a hole. So I'm gonna set it on this little round thing. This came with my snap kit. And I'm gonna decide where I want the grommet. And I think right there, I think right there looks good. And then I just hammer it. First two layers, you can see here, it's through the first two layers. It's just gotta get through the back. So what I'm gonna do is just help it. And I'm just gonna cut some of this top layers away. And it's actually, it's almost through the back. I think we could actually just make this work, look. So if I just cut this away here, that will make the hole complete. And you can see there's a hole in it now. So now um, 
the flat part of the grommet goes into the front. These are quarter, this is a quarter inch grommet, six millimeter. So it goes in like that. And then you have like a little back part that sits over it. And once you put that little piece over it, you just take this tool and squeeze it. And it bends the inner part of the grommet around it to complete this. So now this is all set. I could also put a grommet on the stocking and hook, you know, both things through the hole. Um, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to thread it through. So I think I want it close like that. And I thread it my needle. This is what I have here. It's this DMC pearl cotton. And this is the one I have. So it's December 5 and I have color 321 here. And I just cut a length of that. I'm just going to come out of the stocking kind of where I want it with this. And then what I'm going to do is I decided I want to do these jingle bells. So I just, I'm going to thread the jingle bells on. And then I'm going to thread the tag. And I'm actually going to, I want the jingle bells to just stay on the front. So now I'm going to go back through the jingle bells. And that's going to keep it secure to the front and not let it slip behind the tag. Because um, if I didn't go back through this, it would just slip behind the tag. But by going through it, it's going to secure them kind of to the front like that. Then I'm just going to go right back through the stocking. And then I'm just going to like secure this on the inside lining of the stocking. And I've secured it in there and I'm just going to cut the thread. And now this tag and my jingle bells are attached to the stocking. I just think that looks so sweet. And you can get as elaborate as you want here. I mean, I did toy with the idea of making like a little felt ornament to put here, just to put a lot of different things on this hanging. You could do um, yarn pom-poms. You could do so many things. You can really get creative with this part of it. But I'm happy how this looks. So that wraps it up for today. Here's our stocking. And when this is hanging on the mantle or wherever you hang your stockings, um, you can clearly see this pretty name tag. And uh, I think it really finishes the stocking nicely. If you have any questions on the video today, just let me know. And if not, I'll see you back here soon. Thanks for following along.